Hi, I'd like to introduce you to the latest version of Docker, Docker 1706 Community Edition. 1706 brings with it a number of new features, and a number of features that have moved out of Edge into the stable release. This means that everybody now has access to all those features that were in Edge, as well as a few new features that we've added. And in addition to these new features, plus the usual bug fixes, we're really excited to announce that Docker 1706 CE is the first edition of Docker that was built entirely on the Mobi project. If you want more information about the Mobi project, you can check a link in the description below. Probably the most important new feature in Docker 1706 Community Edition is the multi-stage build. Multi-stage build allows you to set up a single Docker file which has multiple intermediate stages before the final build stage. That allows you to do things like compile files or set up configurations in earlier stages using much larger base images, but in your final image have only what you need to run the application. Let's take a look at the at C sample application, which we have in the Docker samples organization. The at C application has multiple components to it. We're going to take a look right now at the web server, which has a multi-stage build in it. The multi-stage build starts with a node base image. That node base image is used to compile a React.js application. Now, that produces a bunch of static files. The next stage is the Java Spring Boot compilation on a Maven base image. Now, that produces a jar file that is used in the final OpenJDK image that is on the third stage. So this is important because it allows you to bring the results of two different compilations into the final stage of the build without having the build environments come with it. So Maven is a much heavier base image because it has all these compilation components in it than just the open JDK base image. So all we need from there is the jar file that contains the, all the components that we need to serve the application. So your final image doesn't contain these intermediate stages and is much smaller Therefore, it'll run much more quickly and doesn't take as much when you're passing it around through registries. We've also added a build args flag to the Docker build command. This allows Docker file authors to define a variable that can then be used and defined at build time by the person running the Docker build command. For logs and metrics, there's a few new things to mention. First off, service logs are now no longer just in Edge, they're now in stable as well, which means that you can now collect logs on an entire service that's running in swarm mode without getting the logs just for a particular container. We've also added in support for logs plugins in 1706. For metrics, we have a new API endpoint slash metrics. This allows you to build metrics plugins for Docker. Now, this is available in stable, but it is marked as experimental, so it might change in the future. Docker has provided support for a number of different types of networks for quite a while now. In Docker 1706CE, we're adding in support for node local networks. That means that you can take full advantage of different network types like Mac VLAN, IP VLAN, and others that require connecting to a network local to a particular node. For Swarm mode, there's a number of new features. The first is an improvement to certificate rotation. Certificate rotation is important because it helps you maintain the security of the swarm. When we introduced swarm mode in Docker 1.12, we introduced certificate rotation that occurs automatically, or you could set the exact period, which had happened down to every hour. In 1706 CE, we introduced the ability to force a rotation through the command line. This allows you to react to any kind of event where you just want to make sure that the certificate is rotated right away so that you can help maintain the security of your swarm. The next is configuration objects. Much like Docker secrets, configuration objects, which are new in 1706, allow you to pass around an object that can be used to configure different parts of your application. So for instance, if you have a configuration that you want for a particular database, or an application server, you can pass that around securely in an encrypted fashion through the swarm. And finally, for swarm mode, we introduced a dedicated data path. 
This allows you to have a separate path for your data from your node communication. So the, your nodes are constantly communicating with each other, updating each other on their status. And now you can introduce a separate data path for passing data for your applications so the two don't sit on top of each other. For Docker Desktop Edition, Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows, in 1706 CE, we've introduced three new features. The first allows you to reset the data for Docker without changing your basic settings. The next new feature allows you to add a certificate for logging into a registry instead of using passwords. That allows you to more securely interact with a local or remote registry than just entering in your passwords. And last, we've added an experimental DNS host name for the host accessible inside your containers. This allows you to access services that are running on the host, including other containers, that uh, at docker.for.mac.localhost or docker.for.win.localhost. So if you have a locally running database or you have um, other containers that are running on your, on your host, you can access them directly that way. In Docker for AWS and Docker for Azure, we have our Cloud Store Volume plugin. For Docker for AWS, as of 1706, persistent volume storage, whether it's global EFS-based or attachable EBS-based, is now in stable. And we support EBS volumes across availability zones. For Docker for Azure, we now support deploying to Azure for Gov. And as of 1706, persistent volumes through our Cloud Store Volume plugin are now supported in stable through the Azure file system. And this works on deploying both for Azure Public and Azure for Gov. All right, let's look at deprecations. So we long ago deprecated the use of API-enabled course flag for Docker in favor of the API course header flag. We're now fully removing support for API-enabled course. We've also removed support for Ubuntu 12.04 because that's been end of life. So you won't be able to install Docker on Ubuntu 12.04. All right, that's a lot of new stuff and a lot of interesting things to, to get your, your hands on. So we're really excited to see how you use it. You obviously want to take a look at the docs if you want more information, take a look at the change logs. And if you have any questions, you can head over to the Docker forums or the Docker community Slack, where people will eagerly help you out with the new features in Docker 1706 CE.